In this next section, we'll briefly compare SysMLv1 with SysMLv2. So the first thing I want to bring to your attention is this notion of definition and usage. This is a very important pattern for reuse. Uh, the idea is that you define an element one time, but you can use that in many different contexts. So you can use that definition in many different contexts. In system LV1, the concept of definition and usage was informally introduced. So there was a concept as it applied, for example, to a block and a part property. The block was, a view, was viewed as a definition element and the part property was identified as a usage. However, the concept of definition and usage was applied somewhat inconsistently across the language. For example, activities and call behavior actions were kinds of definition and usage elements, but the pattern of, of use was different than it was with blocks and parts. So it wasn't a consistently applied. And requirements didn't have the definition and usage concept applied at all. So again, it was inconsistently and informally applied in SysML v1. We learned from that, and in SysML v2, definition and usage elements are actually formally part of the language. And they apply to virtually all elements in the language, whether they be attributes or parts or ports or connections, actions, requirements, etc. Virtually all elements you can apply the definition and usage pattern. And so this enables a very consistent pattern in the way you decompose things, in the way you specialize things, whether they're parts, part decompositions, or action, action decompositions, requirement, requirement decompositions, that it's done in the exact same way. What are the benefits of this? Well, the first, is it's just more effective reuse. You have this concept of definition applied across the language and you can reuse those definition elements uh, in the way I just described. But because it's a regular pattern, it also facilitates learning and also using the language. It just makes it easier to use. And finally, it enables automation. Because of this regular pattern, you can automate things in, in a more effective way. So this concept of definition and usage is a really critical aspect to System LV2, and I would encourage anybody learning the language to really, you know, first kind of get a sound understanding of this relatively straightforward pattern. In addition to the pattern, System LV2 applies the terminology so that it's completely consistent with the pattern. On the right-hand side in this figure, you see System LV1 language concepts, for example, part property and block. The corresponding terminology for, for the concepts in System LV2 are part and part def. So it's part and part def versus part property and block. Part is the usage. Part def is the definition. Similarly, let's look at proxy port and interface block. That corresponds to a definition and usage. In v2, though, it's just called port and port def. Similarly, if you go down v2, you see that ter very consistent terminology, action, action def, constraint, constraint def, requirement, requirement def. It's basically the usage and the definition. So the terminology is completely consistent and the pattern is completely as consistent. In this slide, let's look at the decomposition in SysML v v2 and compare it to v1. If you start in SysML v1 with a block decomposition, you typically have a block that's composed of parts that are typed by other blocks that are composed of parts that are typed by other blocks. So you stair-step your way down the decomposition hierarchy from block to part to block to part. 
Uh, and so when you map that or transform that over into a system LV2 model, you'll get the same thing. And that's what you're seeing here. So you see uh, the block corresponds to this definition element, let's say part zero. So that's the part def at the top. And that part def uh, contains parts. In this case, it has part 1A and part 1B. And they both have their corresponding types uh, corresponding to the blocks that would type the parts in system LV1. And you see that part 1A is, is defined by part 1A. So here we see the colon notation. But to further elaborate part 1A, we actually show the defined by relationship here. So these two are, are redundant. But we're showing part 1A is defined by part 1A, the block, or the part def. And then it's composed of parts that are defined by blocks that are composed of parts that are defined by blocks. So you see that stair step uh, down the, the block decomposition hierarchy from block to part to block to part. In SysML, uh, and just to clarify, there's the defined by relationship as I noted. In SysML v2, we can avoid the part, the, the block to part to block to part kind of stair-stepping, and just create a straightforward part hierarchy. So here you see part 0 at the top, part 1A and part 1B. Part 1A is composed of part 2A and 2B, et cetera. Part 2A is composed of part 3A and 3B. A straight part, part hierarchy with no stair-stepping down uh, the, the hierarchy. So it's much more straightforward much more simple to understand and uh, to work with. Now, you can add definitions to each part. So in this case, the part 0 is defined by a capital P part 0. And similarly, all these other parts are defined by their corresponding uh, part defs. And again, it, it, you do this when you want the part def to serve as a black box specification and the part to serve as, if you will, a design. So this, it, we showed the example where part zero was vehicle one and capital P part zero was vehicle. Similarly, part 1A was engine and cap, uh, capital P part 1A was the part def for engine. And each one of these definition elements served as a black box specification. So this is a, a typical pattern for a system LV2 uh, decomposition structure. So that just gives you an example of comparing how you would decompose in system LV1 versus how you can decompose in system LV2. I want to take a moment to note that these last three diagrams were not created by the drawing tool, but in fact were created by the ANSYS uh, Systems Architecture Modeler, or our ANSYS SAM for short. This is an early uh, design uh, of their tool, and but it gives you a sense of what an actual modeling artifact will look like in the graphical, using the graphical notation from a tool. So let's summarize a bit, take a step back, and compare SysML v2 with SysML v1. Uh, and I'm going to focus on the goals that we set out at the, at the beginning, the objectives for SysML v2. One of those objectives was to make it more usable, basically simpler to learn and simpler to use. Well, I think one of the couple of things that were particularly key to making to achieving that are that consistent definition and usage pattern. A second thing is more consistent terminology that you saw. And things like the ability to decompose parts and actions in a more straightforward way. There are other aspects that I didn't cover, but these are three uh, uh, aspects of the language that I did introduce 
where you can see it should be simpler to learn and simpler to use. It's more precise. Clearly the textual syntax enables uh, a more precise uh, way to express the model along with the expression language. The formal semantic grounding that I mentioned up front, that's built in in a set of declarative semantics that uh, encompass the entire language. So virtually everything you see has that formal semantic underpinning. I, I briefly talked about requirements as constraints and that they are in fact uh, provide a more precise way to specify a requirement if you so choose. It's more expressive. I didn't have a chance to go through all these different aspects, but these are some of the areas that SysML v2 provides more additional language concepts. For example, the ability to model variation. Uh, we talked about, briefly talked about the analysis case, trade-off analysis, the idea of an individual, like an individual vehicle, and snapshots of the vehicle at points in time or time slices of that vehicle over periods of time. Uh, more robust quantitative properties such as vectors, again I didn't go into that. Simple geometry, uh, metadata, filter expressions, many different aspects again that could, we could cover in more depth in another session. It's more extensible. The language extension capability is very powerful. It, it goes beyond what was capable in SysML v1 with profiles and stereotypes. Again, I didn't have a, an, an opportunity to share that with you, but it provides a much more extensive capability, and it's more interoperable, briefly shared with you the standardized API. So overall, SysML v2, as compared to SysML v1, I think we made very substantial steps towards achieving those objectives that we laid out.